that's an interesting, uh, there's, there's an interesting answer to that, I think. And of course, if you, the talk I gave in San Antonio, which you saw part of, I, I go into it a little bit about the International Space Station. My quarrel with it always is twofold. <laughs> Firstly, every single piece that is used in the ISS and every single thing that's used there, so all the food, all the water, all the air, has to be brought up from the Earth. And the second part is it's in a decaying orbit, so if you ignore it long enough, it goes away. Uh, whereas a facility on the moon obviously has the characteristic, A, that you can use the local materials. There's basalt, which is a rock you can cast into fibers and useful shapes. You can extract aluminum and titanium and, you know, and silicon and magnesium and iron, and also oxygen, which is, of course, the biggest part of what you need in order to live. You can get all those locally, as well as a certain amount of hydrogen and carbon. You can grow plants in lunar soil. It's been done as part of the Apollo quarantine experiments, actually, to make sure that they weren't going to release an organism which would cause blight all over the Earth. But as far as what relevance the ISS has, the main relevance that it has had for me is all the stuff that's been developed to go into it. For example, there's a water recycling system in use there now, which I have used as a baseline for looking at an early lunar encampment because it's something that the parts for it are already there. I don't have to wait for somebody to build it. I can go to the contractor who built the one that's there now and say, you know, you've got to have a supply of replacement parts. Will you sell me some? Uh, and in the same way, the United States has been doing what they call commercial orbital transportation services. In other words, hiring private companies to launch rockets, to build cargo capsules, and this manner of thing. Now, what that means, of course, the difference between that and NASA doing it internally is you can never buy a seat on the space shuttle. You could never go to NASA and say, I want to go on the space shuttle. I could want to go on a Saturn V to the moon. You can't do that. But if NASA is buying that capability from somebody else, and I allude to this actually in the film when I talk about SpaceX and X-Core and so on, if they're buying that capability from somebody else for cash over the counter, that means that if you have the cash, you can buy those same services. So you're not any more locked into having to change the minds in Congress, having to change the minds in the executive department, have to lobby in NASA internally and their contractors to get what you want folded into their program of reference. You can simply go down, you know, phone up the guys at United Launch Alliance, phone up the guys at SpaceX and say, hi, I want, you know, catalog number so and so and I want it delivered on such and such date. And that, to me, is very powerful. So that is the main relevance, I think, that ISS has had. It's, it's technology development and, and technology proof. Because, of course, things are a lot easier on the lunar surface in 1 6 Earth G than they are in weightlessness. Anything you can do on the ISS, you can do 100 times easier uh, on the surface of the moon. And then the things, the capabilities which have been developed to resupply it, which can then be turned to other purposes. <coughs>